Jonathan, it's great to have you here with us at Asia House. Thanks for, for coming in. Um, congratulations on the Kinsey Global Institute report, uh, Climate Risks and Responses. Um, could you just give us a, a sense of what you found in your research and what the key findings were? Well, let me start by first thanking you, Charlie. It's been great to be here at Asia House. And uh, our, this report, I'll just say what it is and what it isn't. So it, it, it's, first of all, a report about physical climate risk, not about transition risk. So it's about the actual impacts of the climate change on our socioeconomic systems. Uh, the second thing is it's a measure of the full inherent risk. It's not a prediction. It's saying this is the totality of the risk that could happen in the absence of mitigation or adaptation. So we have choices, but this is a measure of how big a challenge uh, is all of this. And then finally, this is an approach. It's a toolkit. It's a methodology. Uh, we hope it gives people the tools that they can use for themselves uh, to assess that risk in their daily lives. So that's what this report is and isn't. Um, what we found, of course, is that physical climate risk is a has seven characteristics, and I'll just I'll just tick through them, and then we can go into more detail. This first of all, it's increasing, uh, it's spatial, it happens to somebody somewhere at some time, uh, it's non-stationary, it's moving, uh, it is uh, a product of our actions, and so our actions do change the future. Uh, it's non-linear, it's going to increase in a way which is not consistent with our historical expectations of change. It's going to move unexpectedly. Uh, it's systemic. It affects activities, but it also affects wealth, underlying capital. It's regressive. Uh, it affects those who are least prepared and most vulnerable the most. And finally, it's underprepared. Uh, the pace and the scale of this challenge is out accelerating the abilities and the, what we've, the resources that we've devoted to adaptation. So mm. that's, that's the report in seven words. <laughs> Thank you. Now, the report takes a fundamentally different approach to some of the risk uh, approaches and risk management uh, mm. approaches in industry and government over the last decades. Mm. Uh, it's looking forward. It's not using uh, historical data in the same way where you might calculate risk profiles. Right. Right it's saying we need to actually think very differently and model based on predictions. Some of those mm. impacts from climate change are happening now. Some of them are predicted. Mm. How are you seeing companies and governments respond to that different approach? Or are you seeing a take up of that uh, idea? Well, it's challenging the assumptions, the premises for which a lot of very big decisions have been made, whether it's the investments in infrastructure or the uh, the valuations of uh, municipal bonds in a marketplace. I mean, these things have been done based on models which have been built up in many cases over decades, if not centuries of experience. And so along comes this exogenous shock of climate and it challenges that. So naturally, <laughs> there is going to be a process, if you will, of, of sort of like acclimating oneself uh, to the reality that the stability that we assumed in our assumptions was an illusion. Uh, change is the actual reality, which if one thinks about it, is, of course, is, the, is consistent with our global experience over many years, but the reality is that we hadn't factored that in. And so, yes, now we're starting to see pickup, particularly in the financial community, where it's essentially their business to understand risk. And so this is core. It's not, it's not, a, it's not adjacent, it's actually core. And so that's where we see relatively quick understanding and starting to develop the tools, the data sets, the valuation methodologies, the transparency. It's taking a bit longer in other sectors, whether it's the people who use the capital and uh, in the industry or the people who regulate how the capital should flow in the, in the governments. And there, I think it is a process again of sort of understanding what is different about this risk that requires them to rethink their decision-making process. Mm. And the report mm. doesn't focus uh, largely on decarbonization, it focuses on adaption. There's been a lot of focus on decarbonization quite mm. rightly, but adaption is really something that is becoming an even more pressing element of responses mm. to climate change. The, the, the discussion around financial services and risk raises the important question, who's going to pay for this? Mm. 
mm. uh, which everybody wants to ask and wants to get answered. Mm. You've made a number of recommendations and you've made a number of suggestions in the report. Have you looked at that question, who's going to pay for this, and what are the wider uh, implications of that? It's a, it's a great question, and, and the short answer is we've looked at it in the cases that we, we've evaluated. I should note that we also did a global analysis to say how will this affect 105 countries, and, and so we do see this issue not just being confined to specific areas, but it's a global challenge. So the answer to the who pays for it will be ultimately all of us, as this will, this will affect global growth. It will clearly affect the places that we expect growth to come from, in particular uh, emerging markets, which are going to be disproportionately affected uh, by this. So there is a implication for all of us in terms of the burden that this will provide, that it will place on us. Um, but in the specific case, um, that very much is a, low, is a risk pooling question. Because if we expect everybody to pay for their own insurance, ultimately many people will not. Um, both because it may not be available to them, that it would be very hard to insure against some of these risks, and uh, that it will also simply cost too much uh, for their incomes. And uh, finally, they may not be able to understand the risk in the probabilistic outcomes that, that, uh, that it entails. So the average homeowner is not able to do the flood mapping risk assessment that you know, a large global institutional investor might. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that this is going to be important for every society to sort of come to a point of view on hazard and, and who pays for that hazard and how much exposure will the society accept as being part of business as usual. And that business as usual is going to change. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if we look back at the efforts thus far on mitigation mm. and decarbonization from Kyoto all mm. through to the, where we are yeah. now with the Paris Agreement. A lot of that has been around the balance between the developed economies with greater resources, mm. greater purchasing power, yeah. the middle income countries, the less developed economies. Obviously at Asia House we look a great deal at what's happening within the faster growing Asian markets where there are a lot of challenges and opportunities. Do you see with adaption as a paradigm that may come in in a greater way within climate change mitigation and climate change response, um, similar structures which look at spreading the risk, look at participatory uh, structures which, which enable the less developed, less resource uh, enabled countries to, to achieve more? Um, or is this something which is really, we're looking at a very different way of, of dealing with adaptation? One first comment before I, one first comment. The, uh, we looked at, again, the full inherent risk. So in, in the technical definition, this is the RCP 8.5 scenario, which looks at the high emissions case with very limited mitigation and, very, and no perceptible impacts of adaptation. So it's not, so it's, it's, a, it's defined that way. And so this is that case where we simply allow things to progress. Uh, and in that context, you know, we are then saying, okay, so how shall we respond? You know, what is the a decision that we should take about mitigation, which might affect that pathway, and what's the decision we could take about adaptation, uh, which could affect our ability to, uh, our, the impacts that we would experience from that pathway. So that's, the, that's what we model. Asia House is at the center of this because the responses will be in Asia. Now, Asia will be the center of the capital, of the infrastructure, I believe of the technology, certainly of the market in terms of the consumption and the, and the purchasing power for the world and for climate by definition. So the responses that we see are going to be ultimately defined by what happens in Asia. Now, Asia isn't one Asia. There is a advanced Asia, there is a, but there is a, and there's a China, but there's also an emerging Asia, and there's a frontier Asia. So these different pieces, and many of them argue it's a microcosm uh, of the global debate. And what we start to see is more collaboration 
sort of more a, a growing network. So to your point, that multilaterals in the sense this cross-border collaboration is an incredibly important part of transferring knowledge, of transferring technologies, to some extent capital, though I actually think that's probably not the barrier at this point. Um, it's more approaches and people and talent to, to enable better ideas to adapt and to mitigate against climate change. So I actually feel like Asia will be the place where we'll start to see more of that collaboration and that will be important to ensure that you know, all of us collectively can respond effectively to what is, a, again, a systemic risk. Mm. Mm. One final question. Are you optimistic, pessimistic, or somewhere in between? I'm always an optimist. In the words of Winston Churchill, there doesn't seem to be much point in being anything else. <laughs> and uh, that it's about understanding what is the right way to respond to the inevitable crises that affect us every time. And so I believe we are a resilient species, um, but we need to learn and we need to adapt, but we should celebrate that. Jonathan, thank you very much. Thank you.